Okay, so part three, let's continue with uh, um, some Laplace transform examples, okay? So we did a, a pretty, I wouldn't say, you know, a pretty tough one there with the, um, uh, with the sine and cosine function. Um, and we've got another example here. This one is from a previous exam. It's from... Question 2A, part 1, uh, from 2013. Okay, 2A1 from 2013. We're told that FT is equal to 1 quarter uh, T squared e to the 3T. Okay, and we have the sine of 5T. sine of 5t, and we have minus 3t to the 5 over 7. Okay, and now the Laplace transform for ft. Well, I'm going to break this up into uh, each of its different parts. We have one quarter, the Laplace transform, and I have e to the 3t, t squared. Okay, then I have a fairly simple, straightforward one. I have just the Laplace transform for the sine of 5t. Okay, and now I have minus 3 sevenths times the Laplace transform for t to the 5. And you may notice that I did something here. I changed the order of the t squared and 3 e to the 3t um, when I wrote it down like this. And the reason that I did this is hopefully um, to improve your recognition. Okay, What I'm looking at here is of course my first shift theorem. Okay, So that was my first shift theorem which said that if I have an e to the at, I'm able to uh, break that out, okay? Um, or just uh, deal with it as a shift, okay? So how do I deal with it as a shift? Um, well, the first thing I have to look at here is what I would have for t squared, okay? So let's go through past notes here and bring up the table of standards that I had, okay? So t squared is just going to be um, going to give me uh, 2 factorial and I'm going to have s uh, 2 plus 1 on bottom. Okay, so that's going to be 1 quarter and I would have 2 factorial and I would have s and the power would be 2 plus 1. Okay. However, with the shift, we can see that this is a shift of plus 3, okay? And the shift of plus 3 means that I need to uh, change my argument in the other direction by 3 units. So I have s minus 3 now to the 2 plus 1 like that. Okay, so that's my first term. Okay, it's, uh, you know, very doable and very... Uh, very manageable, okay? And then I have plus the sine term, which is just going to be the 5, and then I have uh, s squared on the bottom, and I have 5 squared, one that we've seen before. And then I have this one here, I have minus 3 sevenths, which is just a multiplier that stays on the outside, okay? And now I look at my uh, situation here, we see the t to the 5, that's going to give me a 5 factorial, and on the bottom I'm going to have s to the 5 plus 1. Okay, and now I can clean that up. Okay, this is going to be 1 quarter of 2 factorial, 2 factorial is 2, so this is going to be 1. I have 2 times 
s minus 3 cubed, I have plus 5 over s squared plus 25, and I have minus 3 times 120, which is 5 factorial, so 3 times 120 is 360, and on the bottom I have 7s to the 6. Okay, I'll pause there. Okay, sorry for the pause there. Um, it turns out that these markers have a reasonably strong smell, and I've been doing this for a while, and I'm starting to feel a little bit... Uh, I'm starting to feel the effects of them. So I'm going to uh, call it here, okay, for, for today. And then I will get on to something called the inverse Laplace transform in the, uh, in the next lecture which uses partial fractions, which we've seen before, okay? So, um, yeah, um, so we'll get on to uh, uh, the inverse Laplace transform in the next lecture, um, and then we'll be able to solve differential equations using Laplace transforms, okay? Uh, so, take care, everyone. Um, I'll, I'll update you with another video soon, and um, uh, let me know if this, uh, this kind of structure is working for you. Um, it's kind of the best I can do given the circumstances, but you know, I really want to make sure that everybody is getting, um, getting the support that they need uh, in this time. Okay? Um, good luck.